In honor of John Lewis and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, and in alignment with our vision for the healing of racism, white privilege, and social injustice, I offer this prayer from Marianne Williamson's book, Illuminata. It's entitled, Amends to the African American. So I invite you to turn within and hear these words as your words. To the African American of the United States, for what has been done to hurt you and offend you, for the evils of racism throughout our history, please forgive me and please forgive this country. I acknowledge to you the evils that have occurred here in your life and in the lives of your ancestors. On behalf of my nation, I deeply apologize. If I could rewrite history, I would, but I cannot. God can. Dear God, please do. I acknowledge now the genius of your people and the brilliance of your spirit and the pain you have endured. May the demon of racism be cast off out of this country and away from this world. May there be in this nation a correction and resurrection that never more shall any hearts be enslaved. May the future be made new. May the pain of the past be gone forever. May past hatred, dear God, now become a present love. May forgiveness truly wash us clean. May black and white America have a miraculous healing. May we begin again as brothers, for that is what we are. God bless your children unto all generations. May the spirit of this amends bring peace to your soul. Truly, you have waited long. I bless your children. Please bless mine. I thank you. And I thank God. Amen. And let's put feet on this prayer by registering to vote and voting whenever we have the privilege to do so. Children. 
<laughs> All right. So thank you, Catherine. That was an original song by Catherine. And thank you, Catherine, for blessing us with it. It's the ego that holds grievances, judges, makes wrong, and causes suffering. Our divine nature, our true self, the Christ within us, our Buddha nature, Yahweh consciousness, is neutral. And it just says, oh, it doesn't have a reaction. And I think that's kind of difficult for us to realize sometime that any time we are upset, uh, this is our ego that is upset. It's not our Christ nature, our true self that is upset. Our true self has never been upset about anything. Our true self has never been under the surgeon's knife, has never taken a pill, has never had an ache or pain, has never had challenges with relationships, financial difficulties, any of that. Our divine true self is neutral. It just says, oh. So my purpose today is to support you in recognizing and releasing your ego's grievances and expressing the bliss of forgiveness. And it's also to support me doing the same thing. The human condition is we hold grievances and we withhold forgiveness because we forget who we are. And we allow the ego to rule our mind. The spiritual solution is to let go of grievances, to allow the light we are to shine and to give our true self mastery over our mind. Wow, that's a big solution, right? And I just want to note that letting go of grievances does not mean we don't take action regarding injustices in the world, even injustices to ourselves. Letting go of grievances mean we take such action in a manner that is in alignment with our true self, in a manner in which we allow our light to shine by standing for what is right and just. So what's in it for you, this message? What is in this message for you? Well, first, it's about remembering who you are, your true nature, your divinity, the Christ you are. Secondly, you have an opportunity by applying the lessons of this message to experience the peace that comes when you are released from the suffering that grievances cause. What's in it for you? Wow, giving thanks for everything. Being complaint free. I'll take it. So I saw a quote in this morning's New York Times and it caught my eye because I realized that it applies to today's message. And the quote is, if you can't enjoy weeding, you won't be a happy gardener. If you can't enjoy weeding, you won't be a happy gardener. This quote is from Timothy uh, Tilgman, who is head gardener at Untermeyer Park in uh, Gardens in Yonkers, New York. And so I adapted Mr. Tilgman's high summer to-do list as it reminds me of what I need to do uh, to enjoy handling my grievances from my Christ self. So he, his list includes, uh, and here's my adaptation, enjoy watering seeds of love and consistently weeding complaints and grievances. Observing and noted noting needed repairs in my attitude, removing deadheads and grooming, keeping my edges tidy, mulching with love, and preparing future beds of peace. To paraphrase Tilgman, if you can't enjoy letting go of grievances, 
you won't be happy. So let's let go of them. So what are grievances? Well, grievances are any complaint we have about anything. Any complaint we have about ourselves, others, situations, and conditions. And why do we hold grievances? Why do we do this? Well, we have, you know, the, the Bible says that God made humankind in its limit, image and likeness. And unfortunately, we've returned the favor. And we have made the creator in our image and likeness. We really think that this be, uh, uh, some so-called being uh, has the same personality characteristics that we have as humans. So to paraphrase A Course in Miracles Lesson 68, which is Love Holds No Grievances, we cannot hold grievances if we know our true self. If we know that we are made in the image and likeness of God, we are love and expressing in expression and love does not hold grievances therefore we cannot hold grievances if we know our true self holding grievances appears to separate us from our source because uh it makes us different from our creator by making us believe that the creator is like what we think we have become, human beings with human characteristics, including imperfections. When we hold grievances, we deny we are created by love in its image and likeness. When we hold grievances, we suffer guilt. When we forgive, we find peace. When we hold grievances, we forget who we are. When we forgive, we remember who we are. Letting go of our grievances requires motivation. When we realize the peace we feel without grievances, we're motivated to let our grievances go. And we experience the peace that comes when we are released from them. So that's a, a paraphrase of Lesson 68 in A Course in Miracles, Love Holds No Grievances. Our former Unity Santa Fe board president, Ralph Huber, writes in his revised edition of his book, when we believe our stories of complaint about life, we are in resistance to the unfolding of life. While our awakened self, which is who we truly are, is that complete peace with life. Our awakened self can only allow life to be as it is. Ralph uh, frequently tells a story that I just love and I've told it many times also after hearing it. Uh, the story of a highly re revered Zen master named Sono. And when people came to Sono with complaints about their challenges, she responded to every person with the same words. And the words were, thank you for everything. I have no complaint whatsoever. Wow. Thank you for everything. I have no complaint whatsoever. As you can imagine, many people did not like hearing this response and they were upset with her reply because they felt she didn't understand their problems. It sort of reminds me of my colleague Mary Omwake who, who said when she went to her first Unity minister and with all of her grievances, um, he said to her, Mary, no one is undeserving of your love. And she said, and I had facts. Well, these people had facts, and they just didn't appreciate the fact that Sono wouldn't buy into their facts. Those who truly understood Sono's wisdom and began to consciously live from a place of gratitude with no complaint whatsoever 
were blessed by her advice. So when you and I let go of grievances and the suffering they cause us, we have an opportunity to be thankful for everything. With that attitude of gratitude, we can then forgive in the manner that H. Emily Cady advises in our Unity Foundational book, Lessons in Truth. She says, to forgive is to give for, to give some actual definite good in return for the evil given. And the September 24th, 1946 Daily Word elaborates on this statement by Katie. It says, God will help me to give for, to give love for hate, to give understanding for tolerance and tolerance for resentment, to give faith and trust for doubt and disbelief. And here's how Jesus says it in Matthew 5. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, Big deal. Actually, it says, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore. And that means whole. Be whole, therefore, as your heavenly Father is whole. So, that's how we can give love, and that's the reason for us giving love for whatever we receive. So how do we put feet on today's message? And we know the first how-to every Sunday at Unity Santa Fe, and hopefully throughout the week in all of our individual lives, the first how-to is prayer and meditation. So I invite you to contemplate and do the practices in A Course in Miracles workbook lessons 68 and 69. That's one thing you can do in prayer. And just in general, to give love for whatever you, your grievances you hold. So during your time of prayer and meditation, as you, um, as these, you allow these grievances to come to your mind, just get, give love for them. Now there's a more, some more practical steps you can take as well. As the title of today's message advises, just say from your divine nature, oh, in recognition of your ego's grievances. Now don't beat yourself up for having grievances, but instead take action to ensure your grievances bless and support you by increasing your awareness that the buttons of your shadow are being pushed. Then shine your light on those shadows. And the way uh, you can do this is using Ralph Huber's Living as Our Awak Awakened Self three-step practice process and the details explaining the process and a worksheet for doing uh, the process are now on our Unity Santa Fe website under the tab Prayer and Other Support. So you go to unitysantafe.org and you uh, click on the tab Prayer and Other Support and then look for the three-step practice. In our Mission Center Partnership Initiative, we as your Board of Trustees and Reverend Kathleen has joined us, we're using this worksheet in our study of Ralph's uh, book, Living as Our Awakened Self. And guess what? You're gonna have the opportunity to do this in depth during our Fall Adventures in Consciousness program, which will be based on 
uh, Ralph's this book, which is a revision of um, his former book, Awaken, you know, Awakening to the Peace Within, or anyway, that, that actually published book that many of you have. So I want to give you a taste of how it works. And I invite you to walk through the worksheet with me now. You don't have to have it in front of you. I'll walk you through it. So the first step is to identify and examine the story at the root of your suffering, at the root of your grievances. So ask yourself, and you might want to close your eyes or maybe even take it out a pen and pencil and jot some notes down. What story am I telling myself that claims life should be different that, than it is? This is usually easy to identify as any should or shouldn't that you might have. So what should or shouldn't might you work with in this process right now? Then ask yourself, how am I living in an illusion by believing this should or shouldn't story? So at this step, you really state the reality of the situation. If you're upset because uh, that sh X shouldn't be happening, the reality is, and you're living in an illusion because X is happening, okay? So that's the reality. It doesn't matter that you think it shouldn't happen. The reality is it is happening. The next question is, do I want to continue my suffering by believing a story that isn't true? Hopefully we all answer no to that one. Then ask yourself, what would I be feeling if I didn't believe this should or shouldn't story? How would I feel if I didn't believe that X shouldn't be happening? And that's probably a feeling of peace or happiness or contentment. So do you then ask yourself, do I want to experience this feeling instead? And my bet is you've got a yes to that one. Step two is to access the wisdom and peace of your awakened self through an infinitely loving, grateful heart. And we do that by experiencing something that we're grateful for. So bring to mind something you feel grateful for and allow that feeling of gratitude to open your heart. And when you're centered, ask yourself, how might I respond to this story with my heart's wisdom? And you can also ask, what's this situation really about? What's this feeling I have or this situation really about? Whose voice is this? Who installed this button? And just notice what you notice about that. It's the way that reveals our shadow. And when you get an answer, thank your heart for its response. And then step three is to take action from a grateful heart. So just identify what action you are going to take as a result of having gone through this process. And then guess what? Take the action. Yeah. So I celebrate the wonder that awaits each one of us as we just say, oh, and put feet on our oh 
by recognizing and releasing our ego's grievances and expressing the bliss of forgiveness. And let's begin now by being one together in a sacred time of shared prayer based on A Course in Miracles Lessons 68 and 69. So I invite you to, in this moment, allow the body to relax, the mind to quiet, the heart to open. And in this relaxed, quiet, open and receptive state of mind. Allow to come to mind those people against whom you hold major grievances. Now think of the seemingly minor grievances <clears throat> that you hold against those people that you like and over, even those people you think you love. I'm sure it's quickly become apparent that there is no one against whom you do not cherish grievances of some sort. Don't beat yourself up for that. Just acknowledge it. And be determined to see all these people as friends. Silently say to them, I would see you as my friend, that I may remember you are a part of me and come to know myself. I would see you as my friend, that I may remember you are part of me and come to know myself. Now imagine yourself as completely at peace with everyone and everything. Safe in a world that protects you and loves you and that you love in return. Try to feel safety surrounding you, hovering over you and holding you up. Try to believe, however briefly, that nothing, no thing, can harm you in any way. Realize your grievances conceal the light of God you are. So take a moment to imagine your grievances as seeming dark clouds that conceal the light of God you are. See them surrounding your mind. See these dark clouds surrounding your mind and just gently brush them aside as you go through them to the brilliant light you are. and hold up the light you are for everyone to look upon. 
feel a sense of being lifted up and carried ahead as your divine nature raises you from darkness into the light you are. Silently remind yourself, love holds no grievances. When I let all my grievances go, I will know I am perfectly safe. Love holds no grievances. Let me not betray my higher self. Love holds no grievances. I would awake to my true self by laying all my grievances aside and wakening in him. And let's awake to our true self now, together in the silence. As we gently bring our attention back to our bodies, to this time and place, silently say, thank you, divine creator I am. Divine creator I am made in the image and likeness of, for the courage and the wisdom to express the Christ I am by letting go of grievances, and the suffering they cause, that I may experience the peace, the love I am is. Thank you, Divine Creator. Thank you, thank you, thank you, that it is so, and so I am, and so it is. Amen.